Hello, my name is David Chandler and I'm the New South Wales Building Commissioner. And today I'd like to introduce you to Karen Stiles. She's the Executive Officer of the Owners Corporation Network and she's been a staunch advocate for consumer interests and apartment buildings in New South Wales. So welcome, Karen. Thank you, David. Great to be here. Karen, there are many apartment buildings with quite serious problems in them and uh, this has really been the background to why there's been a need for reform in New South Wales. Do you want to just uh, share with uh, viewers some of those issues? Certainly. Opal Tower and Mascot Towers were newsworthy because there were emergency evacuations, particularly one on Christmas Eve. However, there are thousands of owners suffering uh, potentially catastrophic defects, including fire safety deficits and waterproofing. We've got masonry falling off buildings. These people, uh, apart from Opal and Mascot, are suffering silently. Nobody sees them. It's all underground. Karen, you're aware that I see many of these consumers regularly, Mascot Towers and Opal Towers owners, and I can only uh, empathise with the comments that you've made and the fact that some of these people are in a world of pain. What we've got to do is to start to now make new buildings of the future far more trustworthy than they have been in the past. So Karen, I've been uh, New South Wales Building Commissioner now for nine months and uh, I've sat through quite a lot of uh, conversations with the stakeholders and with the crossbenchers. What's your take on where we're up to right now? The work that's being done within the six pillars is a wonderful initiative. We're very excited to be involved in three of those pillars and on the steering committee and already seeing results. Um, the ICERT rating tool will be a game changer. The research is incredibly valuable so that we can stop the naysayers saying there is no problem because there is a serious systemic problem. We've seen a softening of the resistance at an industry level to these reforms and the progressive peak bodies have really embraced this change. They're very excited for the future. We were also very pleased to see the bipartisan support of the legislation last week. That was, in my experience, eight years down the track, a first. There is normally great dispute about those things, but it is clear that both sides of Parliament are determined to reform the industry for the benefit of the good players and also for the consumers and the broader community. Karen, you've pointed to the unanimity across the stakeholders and the crossbenchers in actually supporting the legislation that we now have passed through the Parliament. Of course, there'll be some who haven't really yet got it. You might like to point out to those people some of the significant pieces of the legislation that they should now start to take notice of. The Owners Corporation Network is wildly excited about the retrospective duty of care that's been delivered in the Design and Building Practitioners Bill. That will provide protections for thousands of owners currently suffering with building defects. To see the boots on the ground, the audit program fills us with optimism. That will be a very clear call to those not doing the right thing, that they will be found and that those things will be stopped. The fact that you now have the power to prevent an occupation certificate from being issued if the work is not fit for purpose or does not meet the Building Code of Australia will absolutely focus the minds of those developers who have cut corners thinking that they can get away with it as they have done for years. Karen, the Design and Building Practitioners Bill really starts to redefine the landscape going forward. What are the elements of that bill do you think are going to really make a difference? The bill delivers a retrospective duty of care which will provide protections for thousands of owners currently suffering with building defects. That's a very important step forward. The fact that designers have to declare their designs, meet the BCA, and builders have to declare that they have built to those designs and to the BCA will also be a game changer. It will change the culture of the industry. And Karen, we've discussed at length the difficulties owners have of getting hold of as-built drawings and manuals. Of course, the Design and Building Practitioners Bill reinforces that. What sort of benefit does that give strata communities? 
It's hard to quantify what a leap forward that will actually be. Where owners have failed to find agreement with the builder and they find themselves needing to litigate, they require all the documentation for the building to be able to prove what should have been done was not what did happen. Unfortunately, it's almost impossible for those owners to get hold of those records. This draws out litigation, it makes it incredibly difficult to argue the point, and it makes that litigation far more expensive. And I have to point out, that litigation is not only expensive to those specific owners suffering the defects, but it is costing the community a fortune in the court system being overloaded. Karen, you know that there's been lots of pressure for me to have a look at buildings that have got legacy issues. Some buildings go back quite some way and they've still got issues that perhaps we're never going to be able to solve for those owners. But um, there are some pressing issues. What, what are the examples that you might think that we should be thinking about? Flammable cladding is a huge issue for owners. It's incredible to OCN that these owners are being left to pay for these, uh, the remediation. No other product would require the purchaser to pay for remediation. So owners actually have uh, less consumer protection than if they'd bought a $10 toaster. It was very clear in the parliamentary debate last week that crossbenchers believe this is a live issue and very important for government to act. So Karen, right now we've got a lot of goodwill and we've got a lot of anticipation about a better consumer landscape going forward. So what do you think the key elements of keeping that momentum going are? The government must maintain this momentum. This will be absolutely pointless if it's a two year exercise to get these issues off the front page of the papers and New South Wales goes back to business as usual. It's essential that the government continues the process of for example, preventing phoenixing, which is a despicable act that causes so much grief throughout the construction chain as well as for consumers. The government needs to uh, improve the Home Building Act. Ultimately, OCN would like to see a 10-year warranty for major defects backed by 10-year insurance. I very much look forward to a future where the good players are rewarded for good behaviour and where the community is kept safe with quality buildings delivered to the BCA. And I'll be holding you to that, David, and the government. Well, Karen, you speak of uh, a much brighter future for consumers going forward. Um, uh, we've built up a pretty strong relationship as we've wrestled our way through the last few months. And uh, I can only share with the consumers and potential apartment purchasers in New South Wales that um, I know that Karen's not going to back off one inch in terms of representing your interests and I look forward to working with her as we stand up the new reforms in New South Wales. Thank you, Karen, for coming in. Thank you, David.